This video describes the capture process for dry eye assessment with your Medmon E300 corneal topographer. Start by selecting the patient you desire to capture on. Highlight the name, then go up to corneal topography. Once the capture window opens up, you have the option for normal topography capture, a single image, or you can go to video capture. Use the video capture when you're assessing dry eye. Once that window is open, then you can choose to go for a certain duration. In this case, the user selected 10 seconds, and we can take as many images per second as we desire. Generally, one image per second is enough to do an analysis. Any more than one may be too many images for the user to go through. Additionally, it can create a lot of data on your hard drive. Let's center the instrument so we're ready to capture, asking the patient to look right down the middle at the central ring. Then we'll put the green crosshair on the central ring, then move our instrument closer so the red line lines up on the green. When we're ready to take a capture, we'll click Start and immediately ask our patient to blink. And then we'll monitor the tear film over that 10 second interval. Looking at the placido, you can see this patient's dry eye condition. There's plenty of distortion in the placido reflection, indicating the breakup of the tear film. Now, the instrument has already taken its 10 seconds of capture. You can see that in the images above, up to plus nine seconds. Then we can save all these images by clicking Save All. The instrument will go through and take all the capture images. We can then close down the capture window in the top right hand corner. And here's our tear film video. What we'll do is go to display and change from axial power to tear film quality. And this now uses the Medmont TFSQ or tear film surface quality assessment to determine the degree of this patient's dry eye. Let's next go to the video and we can play a continuous loop of those 10 seconds or 10 frames of information to understand how that tear film changes immediately after the blink, in between blinks, and just before the next blink. Where you see dark blue, that's where the tear film is smooth and even. Where you see hot areas, where the tear film is breaking up. We're not seeing a vast area of dark blue on this patient, indicating that the dry eye is rather significant. There are there isn't a large area of very smooth tear film indicating this patient has normal tear film. We're seeing plenty of areas of hot where the red or yellow is spread across the surface indicating um, a broad area of, of dry eye. More tear film assessment will be done in later videos.